In this presentation, we're going to record the payment of payroll taxes. In other words, we've been collecting payroll taxes both through the withholding from employees pay as well as our portion of payroll taxes, which we now must pay to the government. Here we go with zero. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're going to be opening up our trial balance by going to the accounting dropdown and going on down to the good old trial balance, the trusty trial balance, the TB. Once that opens, I'm going to right click on the tab up top and duplicate that tab. So we have the trial balance on the right. We got the data input that we're going to be putting into the system on the left. We'll change the date on the trial balance. I'm going to bring this up to February. So we're going to bring it on up to February 2020 and update that report. Now remember, we're not going to be we're not running uh, the payroll through the zero system here. And to do that, if you were to do that, you can set up through if you select the drop down the add on for uh, Gusto to do the payroll through uh, and integrate that within the system. We're not going to do that now. That's an added on feature. It is the case where it's typically an added on feature with just about any software you have because it's going to be an added cost for the payroll. We are imagining payroll being done by a third party payroll professional, payroll company such as an ADP or a Paychex, and we need to enter that, that information into our system. So in a prior presentation, obviously what happens with payroll, if we take a look at our trusty flow chart over here, this is QuickBooks flow chart. Usually you would enter the payroll and then you're going to basically pay the liability. So in other words, if I go over, it might be make more sense in our Excel sheet. When we pay the payroll, what's going to happen is we're going to say that this is the gross pay. We're going to remove from the gross pay the uh, taxes that are owed by the employee and then only pay out the net check per, in, per employee. So we did that in the past. We paid these net checks and we're imagining we have a third party payroll professional helping us to do that to track this information and then pay these checks and then take that information basically out of our checking account. And that's what we'd reflect in our books. And then we entered it into our books with a journal entry. The journal entry looking like this. Payroll expense going up by the gross pay. Then the liabilities going up for the amount that we took from the employees in essence. That's kind of what, how you want to think about it in theory, right? We took the money. They earned this. And then we took away from them this amount and gave them only that much for the checking account. Why? Because we have to pay their taxes. And so now we have this liability that we have to pay and we owe that to the government and we had to include our payroll taxes as well so these are payroll taxes over here for social security and medicare that are over and above the gross pay that we employ that we give to the employee so now we're left on the books with a liability resulting from the withholdings that we took from the employees and with resulting from our portion of the payroll liabilities now again this would be something that would probably be helped out if we had a payroll professional helping us to make the payments and then we want to integrate that information into our zero software so we have to imagine how when, when do these payments have to work out it's going to be a similar kind of thing we had with the sales tax obviously we're going to have payroll happening what when is our payroll is it weekly is it bi-weekly is it semi-monthly is it monthly and then how often do we have to make uh, the payroll payments after we have processed the payroll how often do we have to make the payment or how soon do we have to make the payment uh, to the government. So you need to think about it could change depending on the size of the payroll and uh, your location. In our case, we're paying monthly. So we're going to make it easy. We're saying we're going to pay it monthly. And so we had monthly payroll that was processed in January. And we're going to say that we have to now pay that in sometime in February. So it is now February. We're going to be paying the payroll liability that had accumulated when we processed payroll in January. We're going to imagine that basically happen or that's going to be assisted to happen through our payroll providers, our, our companies we're working with, like an ADP or a Paychex, and we need to reflect that payment that has happened in our financial statements within zero. Let's do that now. So I'm going to go back over and say, all right, we're going to go back to uh, zero here, and we're going to go to the first tab where we're going. That's the tab we do stuff in, and I'm going to just make a payment. We're going to say the plus button down here, and then we're going to uh, make a payment or money spend money. We're going to spend money on taxes so we're going to go down here and say it's going to come out of our checking account we're going to spend the money on taxes from the checking account and then we're only dealing with the withholdings that, that are for the federal taxes so i'm going to make just one uh vendor to to pay this the the u.s treasury or the irs i'm just gonna i'm gonna call it here for our practice problem purposes so i'm just gonna say our irs internal revenue service and then i'm gonna say the payment happened as of the end of the month let's say the 28th 
instead of the 20 there's 29 days in february here but if it was a check you can put the check number in i'm not going to put a check number in here and i'm going to say this is payroll taxes for january so we're paying the payroll taxes for january and let's put like three line items just so we can see the the breakout of them so we have the payroll taxes are are going to be including the the social security the medicare and the federal income tax so if you were to break those out it would the social security is the employer portion and the employee portion that adds up to 614 so so i'm going to say there's 614 614 and then i'll i'll put here this is social security 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 and that account it's going to be decreased in the liability account so if i go into the trial balance here you'll note uh, that we have a liability account for the federal payroll taxes now we're paying those off so i'm going to go back over and say this is going to be the federal payroll taxes is going down and then i'm just grouping these this is why i'm just going to put three line items even though they're all going to the, to the federal government we're going to say and this is going to be Medicare. So just so you can see kind of the Medicare portion uh, that we're going to break out here. If we go to our, our information, the Medicare is this amount that we took from the employees in theory. And this amount that uh, we had to pay over and above in theory. And that adds up to the 154. So that's the 154, 154. It's also going to the federal payroll liability. And then we have the uh, federal income tax or the FIT, not our tax, but the the employees taxes, which is their responsibility, but which we're required to take out of their paycheck and pay for pay as well. So that's going to be the 380. There's no employer portion because this is just their responsibility. So that's going to be I'm sorry, the 830, not the 380, 830. So we're going to say 830. And once again, this is federal payroll taxes. So that adds up then to the total of the 1598, which if we go back to the trial balance, that's what's on the books, the 1598. So because we're paying monthly, uh, this is the only payroll we processed in January and it, we haven't processed February. So we're going to pay off January now. We will have to process payroll in February which means we're going to have another liability that will go back up again for the February payment that we're going to have because we pay monthly. And then we're going to pay that liability off in March. That's how our system is going to go here. So we'll go back over. I'm going to record this. When I do record this, it's going to be decreasing the checking account, checking account going down the other side, going to the liability account. That liability account then should disappear. So we're going to go down because it'll be zero and therefore they'll take it away. So we're going to save that and see if that is indeed the case. See if any problem happened. Do they give me any red like messages that I messed something up? Nope, looks perfect. Then we're going to go back to the trial balance. I'm going to refresh this. And when I do, this one's just going to totally disappear, I'm, I'm predicting. So I'm going to update. So we have a report that's up to date. I don't work with downdated reports, only updated reports. And then if we go back down to the liabilities, that account, I believe it's gone now, right? It's gone. It's gone. Totally gone. And then the other side is going into the checking account. So if we go into the checking account, we should see a check in the checking account for that 1598, which we paid to the Fed, to the federal government. So we're going to go down here and the federal government it has the 1598. There it is decreasing on that side. Back up top, back to the trial balance. And we will be printing the trial balance uh, and all the lectures that we remember to do so. So you can kind of check your work if you're following along with the presentations. That's it for now. Let's get out of here.